Hello, everybody. This is a lightning talk about cluster API conditions. <laughs> I need Jose's microphone for this. So let me share the presentation. Do you see it? Yep. Yep. Okay. So in the upstream, they describe cluster API conditions as cluster status at glance. And soon we'll see what's that about. So first few uh, introduction points uh, that I took from the upstream. Uh, so in general, uh, the conditions are designed to provide a at glance view, uh, the status of a cluster. Uh, so you get an insight about, about what's happening throughout the entire uh, cluster, you know, both on the Kubernetes side and with Kubernetes resources and on the provider side, in our case, with Azure resources. So we have a bunch of CRs, which are all uh, tied somehow. We have direct connections with uh, object references, and we have indirect connections with owner references. So the entire dependency graph between the CRs is uh, not that trivial. and uh, for example, debugging stuff during on-call shifts for other providers can be daunting. And uh, understanding the system in general, even when you join the team or when you work on something uh, that is uh, outside of your area of expertise can be also complex. So understanding what's happening in the system can be a non-trivial task. So some of the user stories they defined in the upstream that conditions should uh, help get answers. Uh, understanding what is the state of the initial cluster provisioning, so basically cluster creation. Uh, understanding what's happening during the upgrade workflow. Uh, I would say that's pretty much interesting to us. And understanding the operational state of the cluster in general. That is That should include the, the state of the cluster outside of uh, creation or upgrade, but the general state of the cluster throughout the life cycle. Of the cluster. Some of the constraints for the provider independent cluster API conditions uh, that are defined by the upstream are that they must be provider agnostic. So provider independent cluster API conditions uh, should basically be something that can be used by any provider, AWS, Azure, KVM, or whatever. And uh, having a condition something something ready or ready in general uh, if it's a summary uh, means that uh, the component that the condition is describing uh, is uh, deployed it's provisioned and not only that uh, but it's ready to serve the whatever the application needs the, the, to serve the application workload so it should not be only about uh, provisioning and uh, deployment of some infrastructure resource but about the general uh, status of the of the component and its readiness to do what you want it to do. Uh, also, in addition to that, uh, any changes in the cluster infrastructure and like operations like upgrades, uh, scaling up, scaling down, deleting are should be considered as a deviation from the normal workflow. What does it mean? Uh, it means that. Somewhere on some CR, when something is changing, you should be able to see uh, some ready condition basically being uh, set to false because something will be considered not to be ready and uh, you will get a warning that something is changing. For example, in our case, what we even can see now is when we are having an upgrade or when some class, when some node pool would be scaled, for example, there would be a VMSS deployment running and uh, the, st the status, the, the power state, no, not the power, sorry, the provisioning state of the VMSS deployment would be running in that moment because some upgrade may be happening. And uh, that would be basically visible in, uh, in the conditions themselves. Uh, the status would be initially set in the Azure machine pool condition, which would then propagate to machine pool condition, which would then propagate to cluster condition. So, it's like there is a tree of condition dependencies and uh, the condition values are propagating from the leaves toward the root, which is the cluster itself. I will show 
later on the entire structure of uh, conditions, how they're dependent on each other. Uh, a structure of, of a single condition uh, consists of a uh, condition type. So that's basically ready, uh, creating, upgrading that we have at the moment, uh, infrastructure ready, or, or some other conditions that I will show now. The status, if some condition is true, false, or unknown. This is a uh, different little bit than the conditions that we currently have, like the legacy conditions that we had in Azure Config, because I as understood uh, legacy conditions that we have, and I don't think we use them anymore, are simply either set or not set. So it's either there or it's not. But cluster API conditions uh, are designed based on Kubernetes conditions, I believe. Uh, for example, node object have uh, node objects have conditions, and uh, the status is uh, is not uh, like it's not like a single state like set or not set, but it can have multiple statuses. So initially, uh, those were designed that true must be good and false must be bad. But uh, with some uh, latest uh, development in the upstream, that's not necessarily like that. So we can have a condition which is set to false, and that does not have to be anything bad. For example, creating false means that the creation of the cluster is completed, and there will be appropriate uh, reason field set to a cluster creation completed, something like that. And the severity of that condition will be simply info, because the creation has been completed, uh, or upgrade has been completed, and everything is good. Uh, so when some condition is set to false, for example, we come to the next following fields, there should be a severity and a reason field set, which explain why some condition is false and uh, what is the severity of that situation. And finally, we have a message, so like human friendly description of what's going on. And now to some concrete stuff. Uh, so I will, here I will show conditions that we already have in our uh, current release, which is beta 2, and some of the conditions that we will get in the next. I'm not sure is, if it's going to be a, a 1300 GA, but it's more probable that it's going to be the next release that we do, like 1301 or 1310. We'll see. So the cluster CR, uh, the basic condition it has, the, the main one is ready. And the ready condition on the cluster CR, or uh, as a matter of fact, on any other CR, is a summary of basically everything about that CR. So once some CR can have multiple ready conditions, uh, so some prefix and then ready, which are describing a readiness of some component. And then that CR will have a summary uh, in the form of a single ready condition, which will uh, basically summarize everything. So on the cluster CR, we have currently provider infrastructure ready condition, Oops. Uh, which basically describes uh, the state of provider infrastructure. Uh, so it simply mirrors the ready condition that is coming from Azure Cluster CR. Uh, this is the same behavior as the upstream has. Uh, we currently have a condition with this type, so provider infrastructure ready. And uh, when I implemented this, I did not see that in the upstream, they already have that, but it is simply called infrastructure ready. So in the, rec in the next release, we will change that. And we will basically use the provider, uh, the condition type from the upstream. Uh, so we will not have defined in our code. Uh, we will also have control plane ready. That is what it's missing currently in the in the current release, and that's why we have a that uh, issue where when upgrading is not behaving correctly after more than forty five minutes, because we first upgrade the tenant cluster control plane, which is not covered by con any condition, so we we have a slight gap there. But uh, this is currently implemented in the conditions handler library, so it should soon get in. Uh, it should uh, start to be used. Uh, and what we have now is node pools ready, which is basically aggregated uh, ready conditions from all machine pool CRs. Uh, in addition to conditions which are showing readiness of some component, we now also have creating and upgrading, 
These are not defined in the upstream at all. Uh, there is some description and some talk about having conditions like that in general, but it's just some guidelines and nothing is actually implemented in the upstream. And uh, there is a talk also about uh, conditions for that are describing scaling up and down and deleting. I think the deleting is actually uh, even implemented in the upstream. We just didn't add it ourselves because we didn't need it yet, but it should be relatively easy to add. So uh, I said that notepools ready is a aggregation of machine pool uh, ready conditions. So it's simply calculated by uh, listing all machine pool CRs and checking ready conditions from, from those. And there are some upstream utility functions that are helping with that. So it's easier to, to implement. And uh, on a level of a single machine pool or node pool, how we call them, uh, a ready condition of a machine pool is a summary of uh, two conditions. Uh, it's a summary of infrastructure ready, which we have implemented at this moment. And that is a mirror basically of Azure machine pool ready. So you might notice a pattern until now. So every cluster API provider independent condition, which has its own corresponding provider, uh, provider CR. So for example, cluster has Azure cluster, machine pool has Azure machine pool, uh, machine has Azure machine, for example. So every copy type has a infrastructure ready condition, which is basically a mirror of a ready condition from the provider type. And in addition to that, uh, what upstream has, and we still did not implement is replicas ready, which is a aggregation of ready condition from all Kubernetes nodes. So, and like for the cluster, in addition to readiness, uh, we can also describe uh, events uh, that are happening in the, in the machine pool. So basically creating, upgrading, scaling, deleting. At the moment we have upgrading, which is already implemented. Uh, and it is uh, displayed uh, and you can see its value throughout the upgrade process. And uh, in the new library that is being developed, uh, condition handlers, uh, handlers that are setting, creating and upgrading are uh, basically uh, type agnostic, so to speak. So the same implementation for creating and upgrading will be used for uh, both cluster and machine pool CR. Uh, so what can these help with? For example, if there is a problem with some Azure resource, uh, that problem would be reflected in the Azure machine pool ready because Azure machine pool would not be ready anymore because there is a problem. And that on its own would then uh, would be reflected or mirrored with the infrastructure ready of the machine pool. And that then affects the machine pool ready and that will then propagate to cluster ready. So there is a literally a chain of, uh, so since the conditions are basically a, a tree, so to speak, so any change in the leaf of the tree, which is in this case, some, some Azure thing maybe, or Kubernetes node being not ready for whatever reason, we, because something is wrong with the kubelet. So any, any issue that is uh, uh, reflected in the leaf condition, will propagate all the way up to the cluster ready. So if you want to investigate some issue that is happening, uh, you basically start by looking at the single condition. And by just by looking at that condition, you should see if there is an issue and where is that issue coming from. So these, are, these were uh, provider independent conditions. And now I will, I will show you some of the provider specific conditions. So uh, going a little bit deeper then going to Azure, uh, conditions for Azure, uh, for Plus API Azure CRs are basically representing the status and of the Azure resources and are providing insight into deployments to begin with. And then for some resource type, uh, they should provide also insight into the current state of that resource. So for example, for every resource that we are using, we have a deploy some deployment that is uh, that can be running. So if some resource is being deployed at the moment, uh, there will be, a, for example, VMSS ready set to false because uh, VMSS deployment is in running or maybe it's failed. 
So if we have a running VMSS deployment, for example, for a node pool, uh, the VMSS ready condition on the Azure machine pool will be set to false with reason deployment running. And that will then affect entire Azure machine pool CR. And because then Azure machine pool CR will also be, will have ready set to false because something about the node pool is not ready. And then, as I said, that propagates all the way up. So uh, some of the specific examples here uh, for Azure cluster uh, type. Currently, we have resource group ready, which is the first condition that is set when the resource group is created while we are creating the cluster. Uh, and what we have at the moment is also VPN gateway ready, which is the final thing that is created when we are deploying a cluster. So there are many things in between that uh, that are not covered, but uh, it's an iterative process, so we'll get there eventually. Uh, for example, uh, we would have virtual network ready, which is basically encapsulating the status of all networking resources, so subnet security groups, routing tables, service endpoints, whatever we are deploying. And so if something is wrong with any of these, uh, some appropriate condition would be set. And then uh, whatever is wrong would, would simply propagate to cluster infrastructure ready condition, which then affects cluster ready. So we, again, get the issue to propagate all the way up. When it comes to node pools, uh, we have Azure Machine Pool CR. So conditions that are set on Azure Machine Pool CR are basically about Azure resources that are required for some node pool to function and to be ready and operational. So at this moment, we have uh, subnet ready and VMSS ready. Subnet ready is set by checking subnet deployment and the actual subnet resource, if it is deployed and if it is exi exists, and what is its provisioning state. And VMSS ready is, uh, at this moment, it's checking VMSS deployment. So I think we call it actually node pool deployment. And the VMSS itself, but it's, it is checking only provisioning state of the VMSS. I didn't add any anything about instances, so because I didn't want to poke a bear and get throttled in the first node pulse release, so I didn't go that far, and we'll see about that in the future. So if there are some issues with these resources that should eventually propagate from the Azure machine pool to the machine pool CR, and from there further on all the way to the cluster ready. Next, uh, what I can show you is uh, how all that look like all together, but it's like a brief version. So at the top, we have cluster ready condition. Uh, do you see this? Is it too small maybe? Okay, cool. So at the top, we have a cluster ready. So cluster CR has a ready condition, which is a summary of infrastructure ready, control plane ready, and node pools ready, which are all also on the cluster CR. Then infrastructure ready on the cluster CR is simply mirroring Azure cluster ready. Uh, control plane will be mirroring a ready condition of, I believe we are using Azure machine CR at the moment, but I guess we will soon switch to using some, whatever CAPZ is using for the control plane. I think there is a literally control plane type. I'm not sure, we'll see. Uh, and node pools ready are aggregation of all machine pools. Then uh, Azure Machine Pool, Azure Cluster Ready is a summary of Azure Cluster CR conditions, which are for now resource group and VPN gateway, but we, will, we can have virtual network, uh, storage account, uh, whatever we deploy, load balancers. So basically the idea would be to cover every resource with a, with a condition, not, not condition per resource, but more like uh, per area, so to speak. So virtual network would encapsulate anything that is that forms a virtual network. So I guess we, sh we would not have more than maybe five or six of, of these. And also VPN gateway will should eventually go away. So we will not have VPN gateway ready anymore. We would maybe have VNet peering ready if we do that at all. We'll see. Uh, then for the node pools, uh, aggregated machine pool ready conditions, which where every machine pool ready is actually calculated as a summary of infrastructure ready and replicas ready. So this is replicas ready is the Kubernetes nodes 
infrastructure ready are Azure resources that are coming from Azure Machine Pool. And basically, whenever some of the some of these conditions is not ready, when whenever it's false because of something, that value will propagate to the to the top one. For example, VPN gateway uh, being being not ready will propagate to Azure cluster ready, which will be false again. And then Azure cluster ready will affect infrastructure ready of the cluster, which will then affect cluster being ready. So whatever happens in the system should eventually propagate all the way up to the cluster ready. And uh, that way we have a single condition which is describing the entire state of the system. And just by looking at it, you should be able to start digging and to find where is the issue coming from. Now we currently have some of this implemented, uh, but most of it it's not, but uh, we, we have implemented the minimum required uh, conditions that we that we needed so we can then use those conditions to work with creating and upgrading that we actually needed for notebooks but uh, it's a work in progress and uh, projects that are currently being worked on uh, giants form conditions and conditions handler uh, packages uh, should have provider independent implementations for uh, cluster api provider independent conditions so ideally, and those should be able to be used by other providers as well and help with that, with whatever other providers need. So some of the examples where it would be useful to, to have and use conditions is uh, maybe alert inhibitions. So I think, I believe that Jose already exposed creating and upgrading as, uh, as metrics. Yes. Ah, cool. So the idea would be to, uh, expose uh, some of the conditions as metrics, for example. And then when we have a cluster that is being upgraded and we know that something will be, for example, not ready during the upgrade process, so we don't want to be alerted about that. So we can inhibit some alerts during the cluster upgrades. We can inhibit alerts during cluster creation or during cluster deletion or during scaling. Uh, we can maybe expose metrics about some other things as well. So if we have, uh, for example, some networking issue in Azure, and that is reflected by some very specific condition, we can maybe expose that condition as a metric and then inhibit some other alerts. So we don't get spammed by five different alerts because there is a single issue, but we only get a single alert for what is actually happening. So those are some examples. Uh, other, other examples where we could use these is in the reconciliation itself. So for example, uh, Jose and I talked about a little bit about uh, subnet deployments. So if a subnet ready condition uh, will display the state of the subnet in the sense that if subnet ready is set to true, it means that subnet deployment is completed successfully and that subnet is deployed with uh, correct routing security groups, uh, NAT gateway and service endpoints. And so basically seeing subnet ready set to true means that everything is perfect. So you don't have to do anything about Azure resources. But if some of that is uh, broken for some reason or not deployed or whatever, uh, maybe outdated. So I mean, take your pick. Uh, then that would be reflected by subnet ready being false and some specific reason being set to some predefined value. So we would have maybe, I don't know, uh, security uh, groups uh, deleted or modified or whatever, or we, we could have maybe uh, subnet deployment failed. As simple as that, what we would use even now. So, because that, that is happening, for example, even now, we, we some, from time to time, we have subnet deployments that are failing for some reason. I mean, luckily it's not an issue at the moment, but uh, what is happening now and what is creating issues, for example, is uh, sometimes VPN gateway gets into not connected state. So we would have VPN gateway maybe uh, set to false because uh, the state of the VPN gateway is disconnected, for example. Maybe VPN gateway is a bad example because it should go away soon, but uh, 
VMS ready can be uh, VMSS ready can be false because uh, VMSS uh, in some of the instances is being terminated because uh, spot instances uh, are tricky to work with and uh, we don't have uh, any more VM sizes we need for some spot instance type, for example. So basically, I don't know, stuff like that or Azure health event that is causing some degradation, uh, which is causing some load balancer to be broken, what we had uh, recently, I believe. And it, I think it happened more than once. So at least I saw it a couple of times. So the idea is basically to provide insight into both provider and Kubernetes side of the cluster and uh, to be able to use that programmatically from by reading the CRs and to use that for monitoring, for alerting, and for whatever the heck we need. So that's it, more or less. Thank you. Nice. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Yeah, um, shoot. The first thing is just to be sure I didn't misunderstand. All, all the, the prefixes that you put before the ready conditions are Custom, so yeah. we can have a Nicola ready condition if we want. Yeah, uh, well, not all of them. Uh, give me a moment. So uh, some of the provider independent conditions are actually defined in the upstream cluster API library. So in the upstream, there is already uh, okay. So there is this infrastructure ready, and it okay. is actually being and it is actually being reconciled. So the new implementation, the what we have at the moment is using the exact same logic as the upstream, uh, but the, in the conditions handler, the new library, the implementation itself is almost identical to the upstream. So the, the behavior is the same even now, but the implementation will be almost identical uh, very soon. Uh, then the control plane ready is also defined in the upstream. So it's basically the readiness of the time pass control plane which is a mirroring ready condition of some CR, whatever is whatever CR is used for the control plane. So provider independent implementation is not defining that at all. There is a control plane ref field, which is set in the cluster spec, I believe. So what is upstream doing and what our new implementation will be doing, uh, we can see that even now in the conditions handler, it's, it's implemented. It is using control plane ref to fetch the CR whatever type of the CR it is. And then it is using the unstructured type, which is supported in the upstream conditions implementation. And it is uh, basically extracting ready condition from that uh, object. And it is then setting control plane ready. The same approach is used for infrastructure ready. So the provider independent implementation does not have to know if it is working with Azure or AWS or whatever. It is simply using infrastructure reference to get the object and to check if it is ready or not. So those are defined in the upstream. What upstream also has are some of some other conditions like uh, replicas ready. Then a machine pool also has infrastructure ready, like like we do. So it's and in our code base, we are literally using the type from the upstream library. So we don't have it like redefined or anything. We basically use whatever what, what the upstream has. Then some of the things that are defined in the upstream, uh, let me show you. So the reason, which is uh, set on the condition, that field, uh, upstream has more than few reasons defined. So for example, uh, when machine pool ready is being set or when cluster CR ready is being set. If the provider, for example, provider CR like Azure cluster does not have ready condition set yet because some other controller is reconciling it and we are waiting for Azure for whatever reason, uh, then uh, there is a reason called waiting for provider infra, something like that, for example. So in our code base, we use that as well. And we set it in the exact same situation like the upstream. So the, the behavior is the same. Uh, these conditions that are, Jesus, okay. Uh, these conditions that are describing creation, upgrade, scaling, deleting, those are not defined in the upstream at all, as I said. So it's us who define those. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the conditions uh, for Azure specific part, 
uh, it's all us at the moment uh, because that's uh, that implementation is specific to what we do and uh, to what Azure operator is doing. So I guess over time we would probably converge and we would have something similar to what CabZ uh, controller is doing. But at the moment we have our own controllers and we reconcile our own infrastructure. So I guess some parts of that will be very similar. Maybe something will be identical, but as long as we are using Azure operator or, and as long as we are using our own controllers, provider specific part will reflect the resources that we are deploying. And since we are we and CAPZ are not deploying the same resources and we are doing things a little bit differently, those conditions will be different as well because they reflect basically whatever resources are deployed. Sure. And we can create um, our own conditions for things that are part of the yeah. list. Like yeah, yeah, sure, sure. We deploy the ingress controller, we could have an ingress controller ready or something. Yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, go wild. <laughs> whatever we have in the system and whatever we deployed and whatever consists, whatever is the part of the cluster and of the release uh, can and probably should be covered by, uh, by some condition. Uh, so, some ideas that, uh, some things that Jose and I talked about before was uh, covering all Giants form applications with conditions. So maybe, for example, we could implement conditions in the app CR. So every app that we deploy, uh, every app that would, we deploy as part of a release. Yeah, yeah. So basically, some release consists of specific operator version, so Azure Operator Five, whatever. But it also has, I don't know, Core DNS, uh, Cube State Metrics, and a bunch of other things. And none of those. Uh, components are currently covered by any condition. So if something goes wrong with those, we cannot see that. And in some ideal world in the future, uh, even those would be covered by, by some uh, set of conditions. So when something, when coordinates goes down or when uh, CubeSate metrics goes down, we, we can see that somehow. I mean, we see that even now, but... Uh, yeah, but that, that's the point. How how do you detect such things? Uh, let's take the example of the Nginx Ingress controller, OK? Who should take yeah. the responsibility of monitoring it and checking if it's working? It's clearly Good not question. the end operator. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely, agreed. No, I, I'm just saying, like, in general. So it definitely should not be implemented in Azure Operator. I agree with that. And for, uh, for the Ingress controllers, I think there is some work in the cluster API upstream uh for uh having some cr that is representing load balancers basically uh so maybe those will get uh conditions as well those crs uh, i'm not sure it's something new that is happening i saw it recently but i mean that's just one example for the load balancer and for the ingress controller uh, there are other things that should, yeah, sure. should be covered for example uh, yeah yeah, come on, sorry. I mean, it depends. Uh, so it depends what is what is the CR in question and what what is the component in question. So the implementation of a condition for that should be done in the appropriate operator and appropriate controller and whatever. I guess, for example, node conditions uh, that are part of Kubernetes are probably <laughs> implemented somewhere, somewhere around the uh, controller that is uh, working with nodes, not with node TRs. So to each its own, I guess. Yeah, because the, it even gets more complicated when I think about um, provider incidents. So you have a networking issue in Asia, and yep. one uh, availability zone, I don't know, one region goes down. Okay, uh, think about the problem that AWS had uh, the other week. It's, oh, okay, 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 I get It's it. yeah. clearly not something that you, it, it, I mean, let's let's pretend for a second it was Azure and not the AWS to have yeah, a, a sure. common ground. So your deployments, your ARM deployments will be in a ready state. They will be applied. Your resources would be there, but there is an outage. Should that thing be yeah. reflected in the conditions or not? 
Yeah, but if that if that kind of outage happens, I don't think that your VMSS will be up and running. It will be probably stopped or something like that. I mean, well, so if if VMSS know. and you see like three, four, five, ten instances, and all of them you see them as running, but they are actually down, I don't think we can do anything. Yeah, about yeah that. this is the this is the problem. They are down. What what does it mean? They're, there can be hundreds of reasons why a VM is not working accordingly. Uh, okay, so it's uh, very complicated to, to, to get all these sure. situations. Uh, well, what we can do at least is check, check whatever API is enabling us to see. So we can only trust the API. And uh, if, uh, yeah. if API says that the VMSS is running and there isn't, I mean, we cannot do any additional checks. So when it comes to checking Azure resources, we can do whatever API enables us to do. But for any other deeper, deeper uh, status uh, insight, uh, I don't know. I was thinking about, for example, networking uh, stuff. So maybe we could do something. Let's take uh, DNS as an example. So what kind of DNS resolution do we need? We need a DNS resolution uh, for services we deploy. We need DNS resolution working between our installation cluster and the tenant cluster. We need DNS resolution between nodes, between pods. So like we can so sort of we can define a set of requirements, a set of functionalities that should be working. And then maybe in some ideal world, we would we would monitor that uh, periodically, like uh, from some operator and expose that so we can always see when some part of DNS resolutions in some part of the system breaks, for example. And I don't know, it's just from the Yeah, I mean, I mean, Nikki, this feels like re-implementing the monitoring stack. Uh, I mean, that's what Prometheus is there for. Um, so I understand the need for conditions for tracking cluster conditions. So. I created a new VMSS deployment and I'm waiting for the VMSS instance to come up. That's a condition that makes sense to me. It makes less sense to go that deep into the specific features because it seems to me that it's what Prometheus is there for. Um, but I might be wrong, I might be missing the point. Uh, yeah, maybe it was a bad example. Uh, definitely, we should not re-implement monitoring and whatever Prometheus is doing uh, in the conditions because it's, it sounds like an anti-pattern and it sounds like abusing conditions for something that they should not yeah, do. Yeah, because you end up with hundreds of conditions very quickly. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah exactly. Now. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. Uh, maybe for the networking side of things, uh, simply verifying that Azure resources from the networking side are deployed and like correctly set up. And then everything above that, I don't know. We have monitoring, I guess. Monitoring and normal incident handling. Uh, because my opinion from the, if there is an outage in, in a region, from the cluster point of view, it's all good. Yes, the cloud resources are not working. And yes, the functionality of the cluster is not there, but there is nothing we can change in the cluster itself to solve the situation, if you know what I mean. Uh, sure, so sure, sure. that is not something that we should track with the conditions. But again, that's my point of view. Um, uh, and what? one last question, then I for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you told us about some kind of mirroring. So you have okay, yeah. one one condition that is mirroring another CR condition. Yeah, yeah, Does yeah. this happen at the reconciliation loop time? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So it's not exactly. kind of real time. Whenever it changes yeah. in one CR, it's reflected. Yeah. So it yeah, can it's... take minutes for the conditions to be. That, that's why we see that delay yes. sometimes. Yes. So initial okay. implementation in the first alpha, it was in real time, because when Azure machine pool condition would change, for example, uh, it would trigger the machine pool update, for example, and Azure cluster update. And that kind of floods into having those uh, conflicts, uh, very often API conflicts. So after some discussion, we decided to go down this path and like have a controller 
for every CR type, reconcile its own conditions and do not do like cross CR reconciliation. I don't okay, know what is the, uh, so it, it's, a, it's a downside and uh, I believe it can be improved. Uh, we could think about improving that in the future because for example, if we have a five minutes reconciliation loop, so if there is a change in machine pool CR, it, will, it can take up to five minutes to see that in the cluster CR. And then again, this, we, there can be the same five minute delay for a change between uh, uh, Azure machine pool and machine pool as well. So when you sum up all of that, uh, when Azure machine pool starts reflecting that uh, VMSS deployment is running, it can take up to 10 minutes to see that in the cluster CR actually. Yeah. So that's a, that's a downside and it's not ideal. And I believe it can and should be improved probably. And I don't know, we can think about how we could do that. Uh, that's why one of the things that I was thinking about is that we could have uh, OpCTL commands that could, for example, like simple as OpCTL update conditions or whatever. So you can just run it and you can trigger the update of all CR conditions. So when you're debugging something, you can like make sure that all values are up to date with the latest state of the system and you don't have to wait 10 minutes for something to happen actually. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, let's not find a solution now. I was just, I just wanted to understand. Um, yeah, anyway, thanks. It was very insightful. Um, welcome. Nicola, can I, can I have a short question? Maybe I, I lost it because I... Uh, um, yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, is there a relation between like regular Kubernetes events and the conditions? Mm, no. So do we, really... do we emit regular Kubernetes events when when conditions are changing? We don't, but there is nothing stopping us from doing so. So, if you if you think that it would be useful to have a event called upgrade started when upgrade starts, we can emit that, for example, but in my opinion, uh, conditions and events are like not necessarily related to each other. There is a certain uh, logic, I guess, when some conditions start to happen, uh, that you can emit event that something started, then you can emit another event to say that something ended, I guess. But it's not necessarily like that. I mean, it's, I guess, optional. Yeah, because I, I thought it would be nice to have, like, at least on the condition, like the status, the condition changing, like the the, the event, because then you can see when it happened in and it would become a bit more traceable. And also, okay. we have this um, exporter that export exports the events to um, Kibana, and you okay, good point. Be yeah, able to see them uh, in in the in the timeline. So. Um, and you probably could even see the way it propagates up to the other controllers and so on. Too. Oh, that's that's a that's a good uh, good point. So we could have a maybe a, some sort of generic implementation whenever some condition changes. So we emit a condition change event, and yeah, that sounds good actually. It would be very useful for debugging, I guess. Yeah, sorry, Tobias, I did not uh, understand initially what you, you meant. I mean, uh, I guess you can yeah. use both to, to check same thing in some occasions, but they are generally a uh, different thing. So basically, conditions are just an array of objects in the CR status. So Yeah, uh, to, to get back to the Chris's point, uh, it's actually basically also advised by the upstream that uh, conditions should not be used for debugging purposes. So they should provide insight into, into cluster status, into provider side as well, but uh, using them for very uh, detailed debugging, I guess, uh, is not advised and is probably wrong. So uh, what is OK, uh, I, I assume, uh, is uh, covering that what you want to have deployed is actually deployed and it is running and uh, it is in the desired state. 
but yeah, sure, if some outage happens somewhere, that may or may not be reflected by some of the components going down and you actually seeing that very easily in the condition. But it not, it's not necessarily true because I don't know. I mean, networking is complex. It's a big beast. So many things can happen. I don't know. Many issues can happen with disks maybe. So it will look perfectly fine from the outside. Storage account is there, disk is there. Uh, uh, storage uh, volumes are there and uh, everything looks great, but we have cluster issues. Why? Because performance of some disk is very bad because uh, of some throttling somewhere and uh, because there is a big latency between machine and network attached storage, for example, or whatever. And yeah, there is, I guess there is no way that we would uh, see that in any uh, CR condition because it would be simply too much to go that deep into the state of things. All right. Thank you, Nikki. Okay. Thank you for listening. I uh, will stop the recording now.